the many different constraints uh, available in P6, true, they're confusing. And a lot of the time we just sort of use the one that we want and forget about the others. So this is a great time to dig into those constraints and figure out which ones are which, when do you use them, and what for. So this is somewhat abridged, but uh, it's in-depth nonetheless. So let's start by talking about, you know, what constraints are what they're for. Okay, so here's a definition. It's an ex a constraint is an externally imposed date restriction affecting when an activity can start or finish. Okay, so we are the external factor applying this imposed date restriction to an activity. Okay, so constraints are applied to an activity. And the way I like to describe it is that we use constraints to sort of help adjust our schedule to the real world. Now, the challenge with constraints is that they may conflict with logic. Okay, and logic defines the order that I'm going to perform the work. And in scheduling, the order that I'm going to perform the work is paramount. So constraints are a little bit dicey in that they can befuddle and conflict with the logic. Okay, so we're going to dive into that a little bit. We want to make sure that constraints are never used as an alternative to logic. And this is the sort of thing we see with newbies all the time. So new users of project management software, they are of the mind that we should define some activities and then stick those activities to dates. And one way to stick activities to dates is by putting constraints on them. Okay, so if this was part of my schedule, just a standalone activity hanging out on its own, install Windows on April 12th, that's not great. We don't want to use constraints to replace logic. So what we should do, rather, is we should have predecessor activities that lead to that install Windows, rather than just applying uh, a constraint to an activity to hold to that date. Logic is more important. Why? Logic's more important because dates shift all the time. As we progress our schedule, dates shift. As we uh, encounter change requests and whatnot, dates shift all the time. Okay, so having that logic is going to keep that network and that order together. Without that logic, we don't have, um, we just have like a checklist. We don't have a schedule. Okay, now, Primavera P6. When you are on an activity in the bottom half of the screen, there's a field there. It's called primary constraint. When you see it, it gives you all these options. Start on, start on before, finish on, some other things there. So what are these all about and what's the difference between them? Well, let me see if I can break this down for you a little bit. There are different classifications for these constraints in the list. Okay, so the start on constraints are there to help you tweak start dates of activities. Pretty obvious. Same thing with the finish dates. Okay, the finished constraints. As late as possible is a unique one, but it's there to help you delay an activity as much as possible. Uh, what we've talked about, we did a video on recently, an Ask Plan Academy video on this constraint. It's also called the free float equals zero constraint. It's a constraint that sets free float equal to zero. And free float is the delay between an activity and its predecessor. Okay? I don't want to dive too deep into that constraint right now, but I do want to tell you about the other two, the mandatory start and the mandatory finish. So these two we tread lightly with because they can override logic. Uh, we avoid using them. And we're going to get into why in just a minute. Now, notice the color scheme here. I've got some green and I've got some red. Okay, So the guys that are highlighted in green, all the start on and finish on, they're what we call soft constraints. Okay, And the guys in red are what we call hard constraints. 
And you will find that term, you know, in your PMI, um, PMBOK, and elsewhere in the literature, hard constraints and soft constraints. And here's how they're implemented in P6. So let's talk about soft constraints for a moment because there's more of them. Whenever you apply a soft constraint to an activity, the logic related to that activity, the predecessors and the successors, and the dates that may be driving the dates, or sorry, the logic that may be driving the dates of that activity has a priority over the constraint. So for example, um, actually we'll see an example in a minute, but the logic is more important than the date that I'm setting with a constraint. So what that means is that um, in many cases, the constraint will not actually alter the activity's dates if the logic uh, overrides it. Okay, I'll show you an example in a moment. So what are these for then? Well, the second bullet there is where it comes into play. The green guys are to help us all adjust activity dates within available float. Okay, so I can only apply these constraints or I can only get a result from these constraints on an activity that has some float, that has some total float. Okay, now the hard constraints. Hard constraints have a priority over logic, meaning they can override or break logic. Okay, and that is an undesirable result. We don't want that. Um, Activities will be adjusted when you apply these, regardless of whether there's total float in the activity or that it's negative, doesn't care, okay? And the challenge here is that when you use the hard constraints, you can, of course, if you apply them to your critical activities, you can easily alter your critical path. And we know that, that the word path in critical path is a key point. The path is a path through the network. And if you break one of the linkages in the network, then it's not a path anymore, okay? So this is one of the challenges of using hard constraints. Okay, a couple examples. Here we've got uh, activity J, five days, activity K, and we've got them in a very simple uh, finish to start relationship. And up at the top of these boxes, we put the early dates, okay? I then sort of put bars as, as what it would, might look like on the Gantt chart below that. So let's say we decide to apply a constraint to activity K, a start on or before constraint. We say start on or before day 16. If you, rec if you look at this, you'll know that the the date before there was date 19 because we're, the activity J is driving uh, activity K to start on day 19. So the question is, what happens when we apply a constraint in this situation? What's going to happen? Well, in truth, nothing happens, okay? Because it's a soft constraint, the logic has prevailed, okay? Logic has taken a higher priority than this constraint. And the logic says you can't start that activity on day 16 um, because we have a finish to start relationship between J and K and J ends on day 19. So it has to start, activity K has to start after J is done. It starts on day 19, as we can see in the bottom. Okay, so that goes back to a bullet that I had up there that says sometimes when you apply these, these soft constraints, it actually doesn't alter the the activity start and finish dates. And that's exactly what's happening in this case. There is no alteration of the, the dates. Okay, now let's do a contrasting uh, example. Mandatory starts, okay? This is a hard constraint. Let's say mandatory start on day 16. What happened after we applied that? Well, as you can see, looking at the Gantt part in the bottom, the logic tie is broken. And activity K doesn't care that there's a finish to start relationship there. Activity K is now moved to day 16. 
Okay, so that is one of the challenges of using the HUD constraints. Okay, so that, that is an example showing the, the contrast between soft constraints and these mandatory or hard constraints. When we start talking bigger picture of building good schedules and whatnot, one of the things that we advise is to, number one, avoid all mandatory constraints. And this is the reason why, right? They break the logic. And the, the, what happens, like let's say, let's say I have a schedule with quite a few mandatory constraints. Well, when the logic is broken, I don't have that sort of fluidity, you know? I don't have that ability to push a whole schedule forward or push a whole schedule backward or, or a path or whatnot. So let's say there was a change request and I add some activities up here in, in front of J and that pushes J out to start, say, on day 20, 21. Let's say day 20. Well, activity K here is still hard pegged to day 16. So now I have to go and manually update this start date manually, whereas if I didn't have that constraint there, it automatically would have picked up the appropriate start date. Okay? And if you have many of those in your schedule, you have to do that constantly and constantly. You constantly have to monitor start dates and whether they're valid anymore. So something you might have set two months ago may not be valid anymore based on how much you change the schedule. Okay? So we advocate not using mandatory uh, hard constraints at all. Soft constraints, we advocate for using them very gingerly. Let's go back two slides here. So we advocate using them sparingly as well. There are people who can mess with schedules and make them, um, let's say, less than honest schedulers out there who are trying to um, put themselves in positions above their contracts and whatnot, who can use constraints to sort of benefit them. Okay, so um, there have been, there's a lot of debate about whether we should use constraints at all, um, and we advocate basically here at Plan Academy, use them sparingly. I'm not saying don't use them at all, but I'm just saying use them sparingly. Okay, let's keep going. A few more things to show you. <laughs>